Thank you. Wow, that was an intro. Okay, wait, I have to go. Here we go. Right, tonight I'm going to tell you a story that starts with me, but don't worry, it's not about me. I was about four or maybe going four and a half. It was one of those hot summer's days in Joburg, you know, with the rain starts. And I'm on the way to meet my gran at my cousin's house. And she was there playing the piano. It was a beautiful upright piano. And I remember it was that dark, like, tea kind of wood stuff. And she was an elegant, witty woman. Her name was Lydie Marcier. She was born in Algiers in 1924. It was a French colony at the time. And by the time she was 16, she was well on her way to become one of the greatest concert pianists that come out of Algeria. But as World War III rolled around, and with a father who didn't think that classical piano was the best idea, her piano days came to an end. And I remember she used to tell me the story the day that she found out that she wasn't going to go to the conservatoire. And I could feel the, the, the disappointment in her face and how much that moment changed her life. But little did she know how much she would change mine. So there I sat next to her on the piano. She was about 65 at the, at the time. My feet couldn't touch the floor and all the pedals. And I watched her mind push her arthritic fingers through Chopin's heroic polonaise. She was so graceful. She was super elegant. She was a also French Algerian. And it was the first time I remember her playing. And it sounded a little something like this. It was that year that I started my piano lessons. Now, I know what you're thinking. I became this concert pianist to live up my grand's legacy. No. In fact, it was the very opposite. Uh, there should be uh, another slide. Just press click. Right, there we go. And uh, I didn't turn out to be a child prodigy. In fact, I very much hated it. I used to kick the piano. I was a total brat. I couldn't stand the piano. This was the sound of me playing chopsticks. Who remembers chopsticks? Yeah, fuck. I hated that song. Why did everyone play it? <laughs> anyway, my teacher was this Afrikaans drill sergeant of note. She was super sweet, and she entered me into my first I stayed fit at six going on seven. And um, am I really quick? Oh, I might be, okay. And uh, she entered me in, and, and um, she invited all my friends without me knowing, very clever of her. Um, but sat next to them was my grand, Nana as we fondly called her, and I shat my bean, but I knew she was kind of like my safety blankets, and uh, she would come to every single performance she could, and after a while, I actually began to enjoy this thing called the piano, after much performances, rehearsals, I mean, I literally have to count the number of times I did a line, and I had to do 10 every day. Right, so it was around about the mid-90s, and the sound of the penny whistle was playing across the nation. And I remember I went with my dad to see Mango Groove play with Johnny Clegg. And a bit later, a couple of years later, was Michael Jackson. And uh, I, it was the first time that I could really see what, what music could do for a nation. And uh, I remember standing there with my dad looking up and just seeing all sorts of people dancing to the music, no matter their race or creed or color. So fast forward, I'm 15 going on 16. I'm about to do my final track exam. And I remember I called my nana and I said to her, she said to me, my dear, don't worry about what you play, just play what feels right. And it was only much, much later that I could truly understand what it meant. But it really sparked my intrigue into this world called music. Let me explain. So music can influence your mind, your thoughts, your emotions, and your behaviors. It's made up of three things, energy, frequency, and vibration. So when your favorite artist like Adele sings through the mic, you can hear the emotional state that she does in that day transferred into vibrations, which then go into your ear and are recognized and cause an activation in your head in your nervous system. Pretty epic if you ask me. So how does this all happen? Well, first, listen to this. See, the brain has the ability, to, a built-in musical ability, which not only helps our memory, but our emotional stress, our intelligence, our cognition, and our memory. 
the exact same receptors are stimulated when we used to have sex, eat, take drugs, as are activated when we sing, dance, create, perform, and listen to music. It's quite crazy. So when we play or when we're creating music, if we use this um, when creating music for brands and spaces. So let's say this slide represents the whole body, okay? The little yellow spots represent mass. The other is space. And it's not like space that we hold. If we were to take out the whole space in our body, we would be the grain of, the size of a grain of salt or ant. Minute. And so what happens is that that space is full of energy that keeps everything together or, or apart. And so meet Dr. Emoto. He studied the form of music, or sorry, the form of water. And what he did is that he played music or words or thoughts or pictures, and he would basically do that over a course of time until they became crystallized. And the results were quite magnificent. So these are different types of water that are created when you listen to Mozart, John Lennon, love, being told love, I will kill you, thank you, peace. And then Funiwara Dam, before prayer and after prayer, and this dam actually had a dead body found in it. Quite crazy. And that's 65% of our body. You see, so what does this have to do with Nana? Well, she was the big hero of my life. And um, I flew up to Johannesburg to go and visit her, and by that stage she was an old age home. And when I got there, it was like we're having the same conversation on loop. And I don't know if any of you have ever had someone with Alzheimer's, but it's the most like, heart-wrenching thing to ever experience. She was my hero, the pillar, the reason I am today, and she was a big part of my life. So I went back to the studies that I used to pull out when I started this job, and which documented how music can change frequ with frequencies that can ch access your memories. And so what it does is that it helps your neurons basically form those and recall memories in your mind. So I went back to see her and I took a pair of headphones and I put them over her head and I filled an iPod full of every song I remember she could listen to plus some gamma waves. And I just waited to see what would happen. And it was as if a light switch switched on and she would turn off the headset and she would recount a story from her past that that, that, that song had triggered. And so for months or for hours of that day we had an awesome time and I reconnected with her and it was the last time I saw her because a very couple weeks later she died on my mom's birthday. And so I wanted to leave you guys with these five things which I like to call Nana's rules to live life. So follow your highest excitement, make time for your parents and grandparents even though you're busy, they're the reason we're all here. Document your stories and document their stories. Your future self and the generations to come will thank you. Fill your day with great music, don't underestimate its incredible power and whatever you do, do what feels right, even if it's perceived to be wrong. Thank you so much.